This is Twit. Now, what what this week in space would be a this week in space <laughs> if we weren't able to start off with a Starliner update? Yes. And uh, literally moments ago, a an apologetic press conference began. I mean, a uh, very confident press conference ended <laughs> uh, with uh, you, with uh, Boeing and NASA. And, you know, they're trying. I have to say, though, you know, watching these things go by, I, I remember SpaceX having a few press conferences about Dragon and Crew Dragon and so forth. I don't remember them having a tenth of as many space <laughs> com- uh, press conferences or as detailed conversation about, well, you know, we've got a good team and we're looking at that plunger because, you know, plungers can be very delicate things. So, um, you guys, please set me straight on this one. I heard a lot about parachute reefing, which they claim to have worked out, but there was some concern there. And, of course, helium leaks because it's slippery stuff. Take it well, away, guys. Well, I think Mike can, can probably uh, bring a, a few extra uh, points because I was, I was like I was told, saying offline, I was stuffing my face with lunch during that press conference. So, uh, <laughs> it's so nice to know. Um, I know. I know. But... No, go ahead, Mike. Well, I was just gonna say. I mean, the the yeah, the whole TL. Yeah, I mean, TLDR is that they are ready to launch tomorrow on Saturday, first mm-hmm. at like twelve twenty-five, and there there like have been a series of of issues in the last few months that have kept pushing things back. You know, they originally were supposed to launch on May sixth. Um, that that was the first kind of firm date that we gotten after after a series of delays with it with with yeah yeah. Yeah, the parachute issue that that like you mentioned, Rod, and then they, they had discovered previously that they wrapped most of their wiring in the capsule and the tape that they determined to be flammable. So they had to go through the capsule and either take the tape out or kind of kind of rewrap it in something else. So that that took a long time, but they they like fixed all that by a May sixth launch date, and a, a couple hours before liftoff that day. They noticed a weird valve in in the rocket that's that, that's going to launch the mission with yeah. Yeah, which is like an Atlas V by United Launch Alliance. So they had to replace that valve. And when they got that rocket into the assembly building to replace the valve, they also noticed that there was a little helium leak in Starliner and one of its small thrusters that kind of controls how it's oriented in space. So then they took a few more weeks to sort of investigate that and figure out if it was a big deal. And they decided ultimately it was not a big enough deal to keep delaying launch anymore. So we're all set for a launch tomorrow, June 1st, and we shall see. Now, so I, I have did a question for both oh, of you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rod. Boeing's been building spacecraft since the 60s of one kind or another and uh, have a lot of experience in this. They build airplanes. They are defense contractor. Was it, and, and this is all, this is serious. It, was it that SpaceX just talked less about their developmental issues over the years? Or were they just better at it? Because we're hearing stuff from Boeing, you know, the idea that, that you, oops, I wrapped the tape and flammable material. You know, you'd think an aerospace contractor would have that stuff down by now after being in business for over a hundred years. I, I would, I would think so. I, I have two different minds of, of that question. And then I'm sure Mike, if, if well, if and got, a family member at Boeing, but we won't. Yeah, well, no, no, she's not at Boeing. Oh no. My, my sister, my sister, I don't know. Can I say she, she actually changed jobs. Now she's at vast. She's building yeah. space stations. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, good. <laughs> so mean. I can, I can feel unconstrained. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. Um, but no, uh, 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 I, I feel that the fact that SpaceX, you know, was fully contained as a private company, uh, you know, fully owned, building everything themselves from the ground up, that they were in <clears throat> entrenched in that product mentality, right, where they're going to build this thing. And then this is, these are the, the requirements that, that, that they're going to build. And meanwhile, uh, Boeing with that historic kind of legacy as like being an aerospace contractor competing for cost plus contracts that, that kind of led it to embrace a li- bit more of a long, long, I don't want to say long winded. That's not the word long, a long lead, I guess is the word uh, development approach uh, that was so segmented that, you know, they, they weren't end to end testing for everything. Whereas at SpaceX, cause they were small and scrappy, they had to test everything at the, like at the same time. And they also had a lot of input from NASA, of course, uh, in those space act agreements to get the expertise and, and whatnot there too. So I think that they, just because they were just fundamentally different companies, they approached 
the development very differently. Uh, at SpaceX, very singularly controlled for one thing, whereas Boeing is, you know, they're doing military stuff, they're doing aerospace stuff, they're doing all that kind of things. And it was all spread out and just kind of got a, got a little bit sidetracked, you know, there in the development and segmented to the point where it kind of sabotaged the, that initial flight. You know, if they had done end-to-end testing, they might have been able to to catch that software glitch before it really came up and bit them. And uh, they said that if they had crew on board, they would have probably been able to stop it too. But it just keeps, seems one thing after another. The, the tape, I just, I don't have an explanation for that. So I don't, Apparently like, nobody at all. Does. So. So, so Mike, do you think, I, I mean, there is the, the other seminal difference of uh, Boeing being publicly traded and SpaceX being private. Does that make a difference in how and, and when you disclose things? I'm, I'm not like a, like, yeah, like I don't know much about the, the the kind of ins and outs of space of space business. Like that's not my expertise, so I I, I don't really know. I don't really, like really want to speculate about what kind of difference that makes. But I mean, I'll just say in like a larger level, I think we get spoiled by SpaceX just because they're so good at what they do. You know, we it's become so routine for them to to launch rockets and then land the first stages on a ship at sea. Like that's become commonplace. I mean, and it's really revolutionary still. I think that we just yeah. get. They've raised the bar so much, I think that that when other companies fail to meet that same level, it seems like a like a real failure. And like whereas you know it is, it, it's traditionally been really hard to develop like a new like a brand new spacecraft, especially one that carries astronauts. And that's what Starliner is. It's like it's a brand new spacecraft, and when you put people on board, you really do have to be extra careful about everything. And then I mean, Boeing has gone through that in the public eye in the last few years, and. They are, I mean, there, there is no way not to compare them to SpaceX because they both got NASA contracts to do this, you know, launch astronauts to the space station and back. Um, so they are going to be compared with SpaceX. And it is very stark, that sort of difference with, with how fast SpaceX got up and running. You know, they're in the middle of their, of their eighth operational astronaut mission for NASA, whereas Boeing is still trying to do its first crew test flight. So it is a big difference and it does make Boeing look kind of bad, but I, but I think that may be more just because SpaceX has been so shockingly good than that Boeing has been so bad. I think we should also point out also uh, that there is a, there are fundamental differences between the approach that SpaceX took and what uh, Boeing did take too, because SpaceX built an uncrewed uh, cargo capsule yeah, that, true. The, and, and they were able to crew rate the, the rocket for that, which they also built. So they, they control the whole launch system and they okay. took that system and adapted it for crewed flight. Uh, whereas Mike just mentioned, Rod, uh, Boeing had to build the capsule from whole cloth without the experience of flying a version of it, mm-hmm. uh, un- you know, un- uncrewed for, you know, however many years that they, they did. I think it was several years that they had been uh, designing and, and, and flying that one before they made the adaption. And that's how we got the crew dragon that we call now, or they used to call it dragon V2 uh, before, uh, before they, they changed the name. Uh, and so there is a, a, a bit of a more evolutionary approach that SpaceX was able to take because they had the cargo contract earlier uh, and they were able to take everything that they learned in building that uh, and put it into a, a new spacecraft with experience on both the, the vehicle itself, whereas space, uh, Boeing did have to, uh, you know, whole cloth uh, design that Starliner capsule and then ensure that the Atlas V was was crew rated uh, with the United Launch Alliance, build those skirts, all those adapters and all of those systems. So they are very different development processes uh, that can add a lot of extra challenges there. Which may be one reason why they got got almost twice as much money yeah, to yeah. design their capsule, which... Probably should have been well, well Gwen Shotwell has said that if she knew how much Boeing was going to bid, she would have bid higher. So uh, she's yeah. on the record for saying that uh, for SpaceX. So. No, too late now. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>